Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So today we'll discuss about Fermi Dirac distribution and Bose-Einstein distribution. Okay. Let's start. So Bose Einstein distribution. What is that? The particles which have integer spins follow this distribution. and these particles are called bosons mm. 
now the example of these bosons are photons phonon etc other things and what is this distribution the occupation number at some particular energy epsilon is given by one by e to the power beta into epsilon minus mu minus one now what is mu mu is the chemical potential and beta is 1 by kvt So this is the Bose-Einstein distribution function. Now I will be, be talk about Fermi-Dirac distribution. the particles which follow this Fermi direct distribution are called fermions and they are half integer spin particles I mean the particles have half integer spins spin equal to half integer There are many examples of this fermions uh, you all know about electron proton neutron and other things this uh, electron proton and neutrons are all spin half particles a is equal to half okay. now what is this distribution the distribution function at some particular energy epsilon is equal to 1 by e to the power beta into epsilon minus mu plus 1 okay here also beta equal to 1 by kvt now we will plot it as a function of energy level epsilon at t equal to 0 the absolute 0 temperature okay t equal to 0 so you will know uh, that uh, beta equal to 1 by kvt so at t equal to 0 beta is infinite as beta is infinite you will get this thing if epsilon is smaller than mu then this distribution function gives you 1 otherwise it is 0 
at t equal to 0. So it will be like this and this energy is mu this is 1 okay. so this is at t equal to 0 now what happens if t is non-zero I mean some finite temperature then it will be like this at finite temperature if you calculate this distribution function at epsilon equal to mu then what will be the answer this will be 1 by 2 or half so at finite temperature the probability of finding the particle is half at epsilon equal to mu ok so even at finite temperature this is equal to half now consider that there are some bosons how can you organize them in different energy levels let's say there are three levels okay and 10 bosons you can all place them in one energy level or you can place them in different energy levels also so you can all place them like this all of them are in this energy level or you can place them two here one here three here so on ok so the bosonic occupation number of any energy level in epsilon is equal to 0 1 2 up to infinity it can take any integer values and um, uh, it should be positive or zero right because uh, after all uh, this is a number number of uh, bosons in energy level and for fermion this can be only zero and one now you may ask uh, why uh, there is a uh, difference this difference comes from the commutation or anti commutation relation of the bosonic and fermionic operators so uh, i think uh, all of you know about harmonic oscillators with uh, the creation and annihilation operator if anyone uh, doesn't know let me know now so I think all of you know about that ok so A is the annihilation operator and A dagger is the creation operator so these operators follow commutation relation if these operators are bosonic operator ok
if mm, they are denoted with different index indices then it will be delta function and this thing this is zero so from this second relation you get ai dagger aj dagger equal to aj dagger ai dagger now if you act these operators on vacuum then you actually get this thing so the wave function is symmetric under exchange of particle i mean if you uh, change this uh, notation i mean uh, the index i uh, if you replace i by j and j by i then you are actually uh, exchanging the two bosons okay so and the wave function is symmetric under this particle exchange now uh, why uh, am i calling it symmetric it will be clear when i will talk about fermions okay because uh, there you will see that there will be a minus sign here okay and here it is plus sign so that's called symmetric now what will happen for fermion fermions fermion incorporators actually anti commute to with each other this is zero now what is this thing this second bracket thing this is equal to this actually see here uh, these are operators okay? not any numbers so here we have plus sign here okay so ai dagger aj dagger is equal to minus aj dagger ai dagger okay now here also we'll act it on vacuum state okay then you will get ij equal to minus j i now here there is a minus sign so the wave function is anti symmetric under the exchange of particle for fermions so this is for fermions now consider that i equal to j here we are not considering about spins we are only considering the special part of the fermions okay so if i equal to j then we have this or this equal to zero so if we place two particles in the same energy level then this wave function is actually vanishes so <coughs> you cannot place two fermions in same energy level so that's why i was uh, saying that in epsilon can be only 0 and 1 for fermions but for bosons there is no restriction this in epsilon can take any positive values or it can also be 0 okay
now let's solve the problem Hello everyone, in this video I shall discuss problem number 33 of gate physics 2018. This is a multiple choice question. Three particles are to be distributed in four non-degenerate energy levels. We have to find out the possible number of ways of distribution if the particles are distinguishable and if the particles are identical bosons. Let's solve this problem. First consider that the particles are distinguishable. In this problem the number of particles is 3 and there are 4 non-degenerate energy levels. Now we will find out the number of ways they can be distributed. The first particle can be placed in any one of these non-degenerate energy levels. So the number of ways the first particle can be distributed is P. Similarly, the second particle can be placed in any one of these non-degenerate energy levels. So the number of ways the second particle can be distributed is P. Thus for each of the particle the number of ways that it can be distributed is P. So the number of ways in particles can be distributed in p non degenerate energy levels each p to the power n here p is 4 and n is 3 so the answer is 4 to the power 3 which is equal to 64 so if the particles are distinguishable then the number of ways they can be distributed is 64. Now let's consider that the particles are identical bosons. Here also we have to find out the number of ways they can be distributed. Here the number of ways is given by n plus p minus 1 factorial by n factorial into p minus 1 factorial putting n equal to 3 and p equal to 4 we get 3 plus 4 minus 1 factorial by 3 factorial into 4 minus 1 factorial thus the number of ways the particles can be distributed if they are identical bosons is given by 6 factorial by 3 factorial into 3 factorial. Here 6 factorial can be written as 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 factorial.
after some simplification we get 6 into 5 into 4 by 3 factorial now this 3 factorial is equal to 6 so the number of ways the particles can be distributed if they are identical portions is equal to 20 thus we have found that if the particles are distinguishable they can be distributed in 64 number of ways and the number of ways the particles can be distributed if they are identical bosons is equal to 20 so in this question option c is correct thank you okay any question from this no sir it's clear uh, sir uh, hmm? sir uh, can you uh, can you explain the formula for the identical right. particles the okay. formula i have written the factory form hmm. yes Okay. If the particles are distinguishable, then you can place them in any one of them. Okay. So let's say there are p of them. Okay. You can place the first particle here, here, anywhere. Okay. So if the particles are distinguishable, then you can place the first particle in p number of ways. Okay. And let's say you place the first particle here uh, for this you can place the second particle in also p number of ways independent of the position of the first particle you are placing it okay so for the second particle you can place it here 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 anywhere okay so it is also p and there are n particles so you have to multiply it n times so this is p to the power n if the particles are distinguishable that's clear right or any doubt from here sir i have asked for identical particles, identical particles bosons right yeah i am explaining that okay bosons okay so as i have discussed before that uh, the bosonic occupation number can be anything from zero to infinity okay in any energy level so let's say in our question it has p energy levels and n bosons okay so there are p energy levels then uh, let's say this is one energy level this is the second and so on okay then uh, how many this uh, separations are there or partitions are there i mean this thing if they are p, p boxes here it should be p minus 1 right yes sir okay and the number of particles is n okay so you can place them in uh, any one uh, any any boxes of this okay? so let's say there are two particles there are three there is one there are five so on or you can uh, also you cannot i mean uh, you can also place uh, no particles here okay that's also fine so how many uh, total number of uh, particles and partitions are there this is equal to p minus 1 plus n right 
so this can be arranged in I mean this can be interchanged in uh, p minus 1 plus n factorial number of ways okay but among them this p minus 1 uh, partitions are identical right so you have to divide the number of ways by p minus 1 factorial and there are n particles and these particles are also identical because they are bosons uh, they are quantum particles and they are indistinguishable okay so you have to also divide the number of ways by n factorial so the number of ways they can be distributed is equal to p plus n minus 1 factorial by p minus 1 factorial into n factorial okay so this is for bosons uh, i think it's clear now uh, sir what is p minus 1 plus n uh, p minus 1 is the total number of uh, layers we can say uh, means there is a n total energy number levels of, uh, means borders the, uh, total number of borders, uh, borders. Right? so and so number a, n, n is the n number of particles two. number of particles n okay so uh, they can be distributed in p minus 1 plus n factorial number of ways so here uh, what you are doing you are actually uh, arranging the borders or the partitions and the particles together okay i mean uh, uh, you, you can place uh, one boson here or uh, no boson also here uh, or any infinite number of i mean not infinite the total number is n here so you can also place n bosons here also okay in one energy level so they can be distributed in p plus n minus one factorial number of ways okay oh uh, sir why why are we dividing by uh, p minus one factorial okay uh, 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 these uh, uh, borders are identical right so okay. you cannot uh, separate them right they are identical so you have to divide by p minus 1 factorial mm. uh, for the similar reason okay. you have to divide by n factorial okay because the particles are also identical okay okay sir. okay fine any other question if not then sir here p degeneracy p degeneracy no 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 uh, p is the number of non degenerate energy levels okay p is not the degeneracy Hello everyone, in this video I shall discuss question number 41 of Gate Physics 2016. This is a numerical answer type question. Consider a system having three energy levels with energies 0, 2 epsilon and 3 epsilon with respective degeneracies of 2, 2 and 3. Four bosons of spin zero have to be accommodated in these levels such that the total energy of the system is 10 epsilon. We have to find out the number of ways in which it can be done. Let's solve this question. Let's assume that 
the number of bosons with energy 0 equal to n1 the number of bosons with energy 2 epsilon is equal to n2 and the number of bosons with energy 3 epsilon is equal to n3 as the total number of bosons is 4 then we have n1 plus n2 plus n3 equal to 4 the total energy of the system is 10 epsilon so we have 0 into n1 plus 2 epsilon into n2 plus 3 epsilon into n3 equal to 10 epsilon after some simplification from this equation we get 2 n2 plus 3 n3 equal to 10 here n2 and n3 are integers so this equation can be satisfied only for n2 equal to 2 and n3 equal to 2 this means that n1 equal to 4 minus n2 minus n3 equal to 0 so there is no boson with energy 0 and there are two bosons with energy 2 epsilon and two bosons with energy 3 epsilon now we need to find out the number of ways they can be distributed there are four bosons these four bosons can be distributed in four factorial number of ways among them two bosons are with energy 2 epsilon they can be arranged in two factorial number of ways as they are identical we need to divide the total number of ways by two factorial similarly there are two bosons with energy 3 epsilon so we need to again divide the number of ways by 2 factorial the degeneracy of the energy level with energy 2 epsilon is 2 and there are two bosons with energy 2 epsilon the degeneracy for energy 3 epsilon is 3 we have two bosons with energy 3 epsilon so the two bosons with energy 3 epsilon can be distributed in 3c2 number of ways so the total number of ways is equal to 3c2 into 4 factorial by 2 factorial into 2 factorial 3c2 is equal to 3 factorial by 2 factorial into 1 factorial after some simplification we get that the number of ways it can be done is equal to 18 so the number of ways in which it can be done is equal to 18 so the correct answer is 18 okay. any question Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, it's clear, right? Yes, sir. Okay. If it's clear, then let's solve another problem.
hello everyone in this video i shall discuss question number 49 of gate physics 2017 this is a multiple choice question consider two particles and two non degenerate quantum levels 1 and 2 level 1 always contains a particle hence what is the probability that level 2 also contains a particle for each of the two cases when the two particles are distinguishable and when the two particles are bosons let's solve this problem first consider that the two particles are distinguishable as the two particles are distinguishable we denote them with different symbols we denote the first particle like this and the second particle like this here the level 1 always contains at least one particle so we can place the first particle at level 1 and the second particle at level 2 we can also place the first particle at level 2 and the second particle at level 1 we can also place both the particles at level 1 so the number of ways in which level 1 contains at least one particle is equal to 3 among these ways there are two ways in which level 2 contains one particle so the probability that level 2 also contains one particle is equal to 2 over 3 now also consider that the two particles are bosons the bosons are identical particles so we denote both the particles with same symbol we denote them like this so we place one particle in level 1 we can place the other particle in level 1 or we place the other particle in level 2 so there are two possible ways in which level 1 contains at least one particle among these ways there is only one way in which level 2 also contains one particle so the probability that level 2 also contains one particle is equal to 1 over 2 thus when the two particles are distinguishable the probability is given by 2 over 3 and when the particles are bosons then the probability is given by 1 over 2 so option C is correct Any question or doubt? Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Fine. No question? Okay. So, now uh, let's solve another problem on Bose-Einstein condensation.
Level 7 of Gate Physics 2019. This is a multiple choice question. A large number in of ideal bosons, each of mass m, are trapped in a three dimensional potential here equal to m omega square r square by 2. The bosonic system is kept at temperature T, which is much lower than the Bose Einstein condensation temperature Tc. We have to find out the correct option that the chemical potential mu satisfies. Let's solve this question. In this question, the particles follow Bose Einstein distribution. So, the occupation number at the minimum energy level E min is equal to 1 over e to the power beta into E min minus mu minus 1, where beta equal to 1 over kBT and mu is the chemical potential. The occupation number at the minimum energy level is greater than or equal to 0. This means e to the power beta into e min minus mu is greater than or equal to 1. Which means e min is greater than or equal to mu. So if the bose einstein condensation occurs, mu is less than or equal to the minimum energy. In this problem, we have Vr equal to half m omega square r square. So The energy level of this three dimensional harmonic oscillator is given by nx plus ny plus nz plus 3 by 2 h cross omega. In the ground state, we have nx equal to 0, ny equal to 0, and nz equal to 0 so e mean is equal to 3 by 2 h cross omega so if the bose einstein condensation occurs we have mu is smaller than or equal to 3 by 2 h cross omega So option A is correct. Any question from here? No, sir. Okay. So, what is post Einstein condensing temperature there too? Okay, I am right. Okay. Okay. So you have seen this formula, right? The occupation number of bosons is equal to 1 by e to the power beta into epsilon minus mu minus 1 okay. and beta equal to 1 by kBT. So both Einstein condensation is a <coughs> process in which the finite number of particles 
occupy the lowest energy level or the minimum energy level okay when the temperature is less than some characteristic temperature tc okay so what happens when t is less than tc this n epsilon minimum is greater than zero uh, it is actually zero at t equal to tc okay so this is a phenomena only for boson only for bosonic system okay so uh, this actually happens uh, due to the symmetry of bosonic uh, wave function i mean uh, i have uh, discussed before about this thing the symmetry i mean uh, it is symmetric under exchange of particle for boson the wave function so here what happens is that uh, you place all the particles in the minimum energy level say let's say there are many energy levels okay you place all the particles in this minimum energy level okay in capital n is the total number of particles when T is less than Tc and as uh, there are uh, the all all the particles occupy the minimum energy level you can write the total wave function of this n particles as this the product of the single particle wave functions with the minimum energy here the zero denotes the minimum energy level okay and uh, i think all of you know about this this uh, for free particle i mean if uh, hamiltonian is given by only the kinetic energy i mean uh, p square by 2m then the wave function is given by this thing sorry okay and here uh, sorry this is for k momentum k okay and uh, you have this thing p square by 2m so what are the energy levels for this free particle ek equal to h cut square k square by 2m right so in the minimum energy you have k equal to 0 so put k equal to 0 here you will get one by root b okay so the macroscopic wave function or the many particle um, wave function is given by this thing so this is about the raised potential sorry 
No, 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 no. No, there is no potential. The Hamiltonian is given by p square by 2m. Uh, the po- there is no potential. See here, uh, v is the volume. Okay. Volume. Volume. Actually, uh, if you consider a cu- cubic system, then v is l cube, right? Yes. Sir. You are considering a three-dimensional system. Okay. So. Uh, when this uh, bose einstein condensation occurs uh, when this uh, e minimum i mean the minimum energy l- at the minimum energy level the occupation number is greater than or equal to zero from this condition we have found that this mu is less than or equal to e minimum as i have uh, shown in the s- in that uh, solution of this question okay yes sir okay so let's say this is the minimum energy level with energy e0 and there are some excited states right i will call them e excited okay and the number of particles here is in sorry i should write it yes okay the number of particles in the ground state is in not and the number of particles in the excited all the ex, uh, combined uh, excited states is in x so if t is greater than tc then you will have n equal to n excited i mean n is the total number of particles so n not is zero so if t is greater than tc there is no accumulation of particles in the ground state so it's like uh normal 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 state okay normal page and for t less than tc this n not is non zero so there is accumulation of the um, particles in the uh, ground state that's called uh, e condensed page our both einstein condensed page okay and at t equal to tc this uh, condensation process occurs my i mean starts and Uh, see here uh, this is actually phase transition at t equal to tc there is phase transition from normal phase to bose einstein condensed phase and this is a second order phase transition okay. as uh, you know there is no requirement of latent heat for this phase transition because uh, if there is a requirement of latent heat then it's actually first order phase transition and as there's no uh, requirement of la- latent heat then it's second order phase transition okay uh, i think it's clear now yes sir okay or any other question on bose einstein distribution fermi dirac distribution or anything so here i have used this formula the number of ways uh, in bosons can be distributed in p number of uh, <coughs> non degenerate energy levels as this n plus p minus 1 c n now what is c c is called uh, combination right it's it's actually given by this thing okay 
this is for boson and if the particles are fermions then it will be given by p c n so uh, now let's forget about uh, the uh, spins of the fermion only focus on uh, uh, the special component i mean uh, so uh, there uh, can be at most one fermion in one energy level okay so the occupation number of fermion can be zero or one okay so there are p levels okay so how many <coughs> uh, what is the maximum number of fermions that can be distributed here what will be the answer there are p of them p number of uh, this non degenerate energy levels so what is the maximum number of fermions that can be placed here p right so n is less than or equal to p as the you, as you, uh, uh, you can place at most one fermions one fermion uh, in this energy levels okay so there are p non uh, degenerate energy levels and there are n fermions so n can be n can uh, take at most the value p and uh, there are uh, p uh, energy levels they can be distributed in p factorial number of ways and uh, among them there will be in levels which will be occupied so and this uh, this uh, as the fermions are identical or indistinguishable you have to divide the total number of ways by n factorial and how many number of uh, levels which will be not occupied it will be equal to p minus n right and they can be distributed in p minus n number of p minus n factorial number of ways as they are also identical so the total number of ways in which the n fermions can be distributed in p non degenerate energy levels is equal to this p factorial by n factorial into p minus 1 factorial okay so we have obtained three formula actually one uh, this formula is for fermions and we have seen before uh, the other two formulas for bosons and if the particles are classical and distinguishable okay so we have seen three formula and if you need to calculate the entropy from this thing then you should use this formula is equal to kb log omega and uh, uh, what is omega omega is this thing for fermion it is p factorial by n factorial into p minus n factorial for boson uh, this is equal to this thing as i have said before and if the particles are distinguishable then it is equal to p to the power n okay and uh, this kb is the Pullman constant so if you need to calculate the entropy then you can calculate it like this okay okay any question if there is no question then uh, let's stop here today we'll continue our discussion on uh, black body radiation on next week next saturday from 6 pm okay Okay, let's stop here today. Thanks everyone for joining.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you.